All right, guys, we're going to take a little bit of a different extension. I want to get the whiteboard involved today to talk to you about the first form, the first section, and one section in particular, and that's the, the Tan Sao to Wu Sao to Fuk Sao section. And we will repeat that three times. A couple of different things that I've heard over the years of, of one of the reasons why you know, we, we do this section. Uh, the first, uh, let me, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the first section, the first form teaches us a few different things. Number one, I don't see the point. I'm not going to get into my stance or whatnot. I've done many videos on this and we'll do it before. When you're in the Yi Ji Kim Young Ma stance or the goat clamping stance, the one thing is you don't want your knees pointing in. Uh, let me get rid of my dummies here for a second so you can see this. A lot of people think that when they're in this stance, you know, they, um, they're going to have uh, their knees are pointing down and inward uh, and their feet are, you know, pointing in, right? And, and the concept was, is to, you know, to be able to catch a goat in between your legs and hold and pin them in there. And although I see some validity to it, that's not true. A lineage that is very infamous for that concept is uh, the, uh, the, the Lung Ting uh, lineage, the W-I-N-G-T-S-U-N. They have a lot of 70-30 weight distribution, 90-10 weight distribution, uh, a lot of uh, bent in knees. Um, I, I have a love hate relationship with that lineage because I think they produce some of the best fighters out there. I really do. I mean, you've got Norbert Mayday, uh, Eamon Bostepi, Victor Gutierrez. Uh, I know Steve Sergio came from that lineage. Um, there's there's a ton of guys that uh, are really out there. Uh, Ferd Ferdinand, uh, or, uh, um, who's uh, the, the, my Dago brother, who's an amazing fighter too. So there's a lot of people who came from that lineage, but I just happen to agree with it, right? So one of the things that you want to look into from an overhead point of view, and this could be three-dimensional, is if this is the top of your head and you're looking down, everything needs to be going, there needs to be going down on a, a, a triangle angle. And that's, that's going to be everything from, can okay, you see my little guy over here? That's going to be all your joints, right? And what are your joints? You're looking at your, um, your ankles, your knees, your hips, your spine, your uh, shoulders, your elbows, and your wrists. All of those from every point that you're out has to form a, a pyramid. So it doesn't matter if it's shoulders. Shoulders need to go out. You know, they need to form that for across, and then it would three-dimensionally come out forward towards me, but also in a multi-directional upwards down, right? Because here I am forming a triangle, so it's a three-dimensional. It, it goes forward and it covers every angle along this way. You have to think of that throughout the course of the way that you're in your stance. One of the biggest things that I always think is helpful is in my stance, um, when I'm root, when I'm rooting it, you know, this is my head and uh, these are my hips. My hips have two like um, steel uh, eyelets that are drilled into my hips. And then I've got cords, big cables that are pulling my hips down and forward. And that is helping form that third leg of a tripod, right? My phone is on a tripod right now. And no matter which direction I turn it, there's always going to be a front leg and the center what's holding the stand that's holding the phone right now, that is the base for, uh, you know, my, my spine, if you will. It's just a concept. But, I, but I'll, and I'll talk about that much later. What I really want to get into today is talking about the, the section, the Fuk Sao section, right? It's three times to, to, to Wu Sao, to Fuk Sao. And, and I'm not going to get into, you know, should your hand be torqued up? Should it be relaxed? Should it be like, you know, the William Chung lineage where, you know, they put a lot of tension on that because it, it needs to be um, like, like uh, the, the Chinese character for a dog, all that. I want to get into energy in opposite directions. One of the most powerful things that you do learn from the first form, which proves that Wing Chun has so much grappling, gra grappling application, it's ridiculous. From a side view, if this is overhead and this is my spine and these are my hips and feet and all this, I want to look at my shoulder here and my elbow here and then my wrist here. I used to, I'd done in a video before many, many years ago, I said there is no Fuk Sao Wing Chun. And the way I look at it, Fuk Sao is just a Swiss army knife for all your tools. Because out of your Fuk Sao comes a punch, comes your Pac, comes your Wu Sao, comes your Bill G, comes your palm strike, everything. It just comes out of the wrist, right? And what we're focusing on when we draw energy up from the earth is you're getting it out. We only use really 
four weapons, well, let's just say four weapons. You know, your foot for a kick, your knee for a knee, your elbow for an elbow, and, what, and your, whatever comes out of your wrist. It could be a palm strike for reinforced uh, with the structure of the bones, or your fist. doesn't make a difference, but that's when you're out the other targets, right? So we have one, two, you know, three, and then four. Those are our weapons. But in this section specifically, one of the, the folklore legends was that Ipman had his students do this section for an hour. So I'm going to tell you flat out, I've been training Wing Chun 25 years. I've never done the form in an hour. Never. It's a few minutes. I think it's a load of garbage. Plus, I had always I'd heard from somebody down the road that that was Ipman's way. And if you're a teacher, you know how this goes. You have your students do this for an hour. And the pace they move is this. This fast because he was downstairs in the den smoking opium that's what i was told it's like this is what the stuff he was doing and i'm not going to tell you who told me that but let me tell you he would know that being said this the purpose for the one of the purposes for that granted when we're doing the tonsil wedge when we're doing the fuxal we're paying homage to the inside gate we're paying homage to the outside gate right when we go forward with wu sao forwarding energy Excuse me, go forward. Fuck Sao, forwarding energy. Wu Sao, you know, draws back in energy. What I'm more interested in is the forward section. You paying attention to the relationship of the elbow. The elbow is pushing the arm forward. The wrist has no place to go but forward. So you're not paying attention to anything in between here. The, the elbows, are, the shoulder is just a, a guideline pivot point, but the elbow is pushing forward and the, and the wrist is attached. The, the number one I say a reason the one, number one way I see to, to feel this in application is go to the gym, sit in a seated bench press machine, put on weight, <clears throat> a moderate amount of weight, and then put your intent in your hands and push your hands forward. Now, do a few reps, right? Do two, three, four. Take a few minute break. Take the same amount of weight. Attach your hands to the bar, but put all your intent in your elbow and push your elbows forward. You tell me which ones you have. You feel you have more power. Same thing with a pulling exercise. Sit, put your intent in your hand, pull the weight in. Pull your intent in your hand, pull your elbows in. You're going to feel a massive amount of difference, just body mechanics and the tent that you're putting it in. The coolest thing, actually, in my opinion, is the Wu Sao that's coming back. And what I want you to think about when you're doing the Wu Sao coming back is picture um, a, a giant sheet of drywall. You guys who have ever done construction, you know how heavy drywall is. Now think about, you've got to take the drywall, which is 9, 10 feet high, and your hands are up on it, and somebody is feeding it to you, and you've got to walk it back and put it on the ground. What do you do? You're not stiff as you're bringing it in, but you're walking the energy backwards, and you're absorbing that drywall in down because it's heavy, and then you're nestling it down to the ground. But only take it to this point. Picture feeding it coming back in, and that's here. That is your Wu Sao section. So in this space, what you really need to picture is, while your elbow is drawing back in this position, your wrist is moving forward. It's energy in opposite directions. So as my elbow is pulling back, my wrist is still going forward with, an attempt, with intent, to prevent from collapsing in. Because if the elbow is drawing back and I put all that focus in the elbow, this can be collapsed in. So the same thing. Think of taking all that pressure in from a wall and allowing it to absorb into your body. You're, you're pushing, you're, you're guiding forward intent, pulling your elbow back, but you're allowing this to cushion that blow and absorb that energy in. If that's not more of a grappling context and an application, Oh, there's no grappling in Wing Chun. You're full of shit. It's in the very first form. Guys, I've been wrestling since I was 12 years old. Now, I know how this concept works when you're, you can't be stiff when you wrestle and you can't be just a floppy fish either. You have to have that middle gate energy of like bamboo where it's pliable. So the same thing you're learning in that. So this is one of the most fascinating topics, I think, when it comes down to the first form that a lot of people don't think about. They just arbitrarily do this, this movement and they don't know why they're building this energy. What am, I, what am I doing this energy? What am I building this forward? Same thing, energy goes forward. And again, what I do think is um, in this position, and let me finish up this topic for a second. So as I draw back here, this is going forward as I'm drawing back. So you have two joints. One is going this way. One is going this way. But you're led by this joint. Okay? So keep that in mind. The other thing too is when you're also focused on that section, and we'll get into this later too, 
when you, um, and this is your uh, shoulder joint, and these are your hips, right? When you go forward, okay, forward shoulder energy, forward is opposite hip, opposite hip. So if I'm doing my foot out here, I'm backed up. I take that energy from, like I take that energy from my hip and I support it underneath the um, my right forwarding elbow, right? When I'm coming backwards, same side hip. So backwards is same side hip. So forwarding energy, you support your other hip, you recruit that intent, dig it up underneath there, and you put it right under the elbow. When you're drawing it back, same side hip. So then you're going to be feeling, feeling some dynamic stuff. When I draw that energy back, I, I'm tucking my butt cheek underneath, and I'm just really, I'm trying to squeeze my hip and my elbow together while going forward with this wrist at the same time. And as I'm going forward in the foot out, this side digs up underneath and it supports this. You're going to find a lot of skeletal structure, which will reinforce your muscle structure, but your muscle will be off and you're still digging into them. So the first form, again, I've been doing it 25 years and it's still, it's, it's, it really reveals itself in a lot of different ways as you wind up continuing the journey. But one of the most fascinating sections, because I did talk about the energy explosion out from the second section of the first form. That first section of the first form, especially the foot, the wusau, the foot sow, that three times we're doing it, experiment with your hips, dig your, and, and if you're going to try it, go go forward and then dig your other, your, your opposite, your same side hip in. You're going to feel this entire side of your body shut off. No, but maybe if you, if you dig, if you engage it on, you're going to feel your entire body engaged with them doing separate things. It's it, you, exploring your body. This is called invisible Wing Chun. This is something we can't teach you. Can't, you have to explore this stuff on your own. We can give you all the schools, all, all the concepts, everything, but you have to explore this on your own. You'll feel it. So in that Wu Sao Fu Sao section, check it out. Think about you know, you're absorbing that energy in. What are you doing? You're, you're not fighting it. You're allowing it to come back in, and you're, you're guiding it back in, which will also be recruited into your core. Try it. Get a partner to push some energy in front of you. you know, do this Wu Sao. Get them to push this energy in front of you. Turn this off but allow that energy to come back. It's grappling one-on-one. -on -one. It's absorption of energy. I hope this helped. We got a lot more to cover on the channel. I appreciate you guys' time, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.